Tonight, breaking news, tropical storm Ernesto taking aim, set to become a hurricane now. Ginger Z has the latest track. Also, the urgent manhunt right now for an escape killer will have the latest. First tonight, tracking tropical storm Ernesto closing in on Puerto Rico. People warned to stay in their homes off the streets. On track now to become a hurricane where it heads from there. Ginger standing by with the new track. Tonight, the race for the White House election day just 84 days away. Tonight, Vice President Kamala Harris's pick for VP Governor Tim Walz responding now to attacks from the Trump campaign. I am damn proud of my service to this country. Defending his 24-year military record. The other major headline tonight, Donald Trump and Elon Musk, their conversation, and what Trump said about workers. Tonight, the UAW hitting Trump and Musk with federal labor charges now. The urgent manhunt at this hour after a convicted killer escaped from guards in a hospital parking lot, running into the woods, still handcuffed and restrained at the waist. Tonight, Israel on high alert for a possible strike from Iran or Hezbollah. All of this amid the urgent effort for ceasefire talks between Israel and Hamas. Meantime, the war in Ukraine. Ukrainian forces now deeper inside Russia. Tonight, the images right here of some Russian soldiers surrendering. From Greece tonight, the images coming in, the out-of-control wildfires burning near Athens. Tens of thousands of people forced to evacuate. American tourists there to see ancient ruins, witnessing a country in flames. Here in the U.S., the major move tonight from President Biden is cancer moonshot on a personal mission to cut cancer deaths in half within 25 years. The largest nuclear power plant in the U.S. issuing an alert after a fire breaks out at the facility. On heightened alert tonight as Taylor Swift plans to resume her tour following that foiled terror plot. And tonight, the first look, a fully reconstructed dinosaur believed to be a new species found here in the U.S., 150 million years old. And you'll see it right here. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a very busy Tuesday night. We do begin tonight with Tropical Storm Ernesto gaining strength in the Caribbean, set to become a hurricane, and just hours now from reaching Puerto Rico, where the governor has activated the National Guard tonight, now warning everyone to shelter inside until the storm passes. At this hour, Ernesto is moving with sustained winds of 60 miles an hour, expected to reach Puerto Rico in just a matter of hours. And this storm is likely now to become a full-blown hurricane overnight. So what kind of hit will Puerto Rico take and will Ernesto then impact the U.S. mainland? Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z tracking this again tonight for us and she has the new track just in. Hi, Ginger. Hi, David. This is going to go really fast. In the overnight hours, you'll see the heaviest rain into early tomorrow morning, especially on the eastern side of Puerto Rico. But obviously, the U.S. and British Virgin Islands also picking up a lot. We're talking three to six inches widespread, locally up to 10. And in a place like Puerto Rico, you have that elevation in the rainforest there. That can cause flash flooding. So we'll watch for that. But by tomorrow, it's long gone. By tomorrow afternoon, it's a hurricane, and it's moving north toward Bermuda. It looks like it gets up to at least Cat 2. A level and we'll look at Bermuda by Saturday. So that's when the impacts would be there. It still stays east of U.S. mainland. I would watch this closely if I were in Nova Scotia, but for us mostly it means high surf and the risk of rip currents as we go throughout the weekend and early next week. Part of that and why we're not going to see the impacts directly would be this trough. It's pushing Ernesto to the east. That trough will also bring storms to the northeast this weekend and those storms have already started and will get going, especially tomorrow with damaging winds from Kansas City up to into Iowa and then from Chicago down to St. Louis on Thursday. David. Tracking it all for us. We'll see you first thing in the morning on GMA. Ginger, thank you. In the meantime, we turn now to the race for the White House. Just 84 days now until Election Day. Tonight, Vice President Kamala Harris's running mate, Governor Tim Walz, is now responding to attacks from the Trump campaign, defending his 24-year military record. The other major political headline tonight, the conversation between Donald Trump and Elon Musk. After what Trump said about workers who were threatening a strike tonight, the UAW is now hitting Trump and Musk with federal labor charges because of what was said. ABC's Rachel Scott again tonight. Tonight in his first solo appearance on the campaign trail, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz defending himself against Republican attacks on his 24 year record of military service. I'm going to say it again as clearly as I can. I am damn proud of my service to this country. Wall spent 24 years in the Minnesota National Guard while teaching and coaching football, leaving to run for Congress months before his unit deployed to Iraq. In the House, he was the top Democrat on the Veteran Affairs Committee. 
But since joining the Harris ticket, he has been under relentless attack from Donald Trump's running mate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, who has Political seized on this moment. And we can make sure that those weapons of war that I carried in war is the only place where those weapons are at. Vance accusing Walls of lying about his service. And he has not spent a day in a combat zone. What bothers me about Tim Waltz is the stolen valor garbage. Do not pretend to be something that you're not. Today, Walls pushing back at Vance, who served as a Marine in Iraq himself, but didn't see active fighting. And I firmly believe you should never denigrate another person's service record. To anyone brave enough to put on that uniform for our great country, including my opponent, I just have a few simple words. Thank you for your service and sacrifice. Walt today addressing the convention of the American Federation of State County and Municipal Employees, saying Trump and Vance aren't looking out for union workers. The only thing those two guys knows about working people is how to work to take advantage of them. That's what they know about it. Seizing on Trump's comments about striking workers in a conversation with billionaire Elon Musk on his social media platform X. Trump praising Musk for not giving in to workers' demands. I mean, I look at what you do. You walk in and you just say, you want to quit? <laughs> they go yeah. on strike. They, I won't mention the name of the company, but they go on strike and you say, that's okay, you're all gone. You're all gone, so every one of you is gone. Tonight, the head of the United Auto Workers Union out with a blistering statement, insisting when we say Donald Trump is a scab, this is what we mean. When we say Trump stands against everything our union stands for, this is what we mean. Walls you echoing those words. That he called him a scab, just to be clear. That's not name calling, it's an observation in fact, just to be clear, so. The UAW has endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris, noting she has walked the picket line with striking workers. And tonight, the union filing federal labor charges against Trump and Musk with the National Labor Relations Board, saying they advocated for the illegal firing of striking workers. Vice President Kamala Harris has only been in the race for three weeks, and now she will start to roll out her policy proposals, starting with the economy. Her campaign says she wants to lower costs for middle-class families and take on corporate price gouging. All issues she'll certainly address next week at the Democratic National Convention. David. Rachel Scott, live in Washington. Rachel, thank you as always. Of course, ABC News will cover the Democratic Convention in Chicago next week, beginning Monday in prime time on ABC News Live and, of course, right here on the network. In the meantime, we turn tonight to the urgent manhunt at this hour after a convicted killer escaped from guards in a hospital parking lot near Durham, North Carolina, running into the woods, still handcuffed and restrained at the waist. He was serving a life sentence for the murder of a child. Here's ABC's Faith Abube. Tonight, a statewide emergency alert issued in North Carolina after a convicted murderer escaped from armed guards in a hospital parking lot. An inmate has just run from the hospital. 30-year-old Ramon Austin, described as dangerous with a violent criminal past. Federal and local agencies, including the U.S. Marshal Fugitive Task Force, seen urgently searching the Hillsborough area. He's either within a five-mile radius or he's in the rest of the world, and we're searching both. Authorities say two prison guards were transporting Austin to a medical appointment at the hospital this morning when he broke free in the parking lot, pushing down at least one guard, then running into a densely wooded area, still handcuffed with a waist chain, but without the leg restraints he was put in before the ride. They are, they're much like a handcuff, puts pressure against your Achilles, which slows you a, a, a good bit. It's uncomfortable. How he got them off, I don't know. The convicted felon was serving a life sentence for fatally shooting a one-year-old, Malia Williams, on Christmas Day in 2015. The child struck while in her mother's arms outside. And David, the Orange County Sheriff says the armed guards who were transporting Austin did not have an opportunity to draw their weapons. As standard procedure, their conduct is now being reviewed as part of this investigation. David. Faith Abube reporting on this tonight. Faith, thank you. We turn now to the Middle East, and Israel is on high alert tonight for a possible strike from Iran or Hezbollah that the White House believes could come at any time. And all of it amid the urgent effort right now for ceasefire talks between Israel and Hamas and the renewed effort to get the hostages out. ABC's Tom Sufi Burridge from Tel Aviv. Tonight, Israel on high alert, trading attacks with Hezbollah across the Israeli Lebanese border as they brace for what U.S. officials say could be a more significant Iranian-led attack on Israel this week. Tonight, President Biden asked whether Iran might hold off its attack if a Gaza ceasefire deal is possible. That's my expectation, but we'll see. 
Today, Biden's Middle East envoy, Brett McGurk, rushing to Egypt in an 11th hour push to get Hamas and Israel to attend talks in just two days' time. But a US official saying the odds of that happening appear to be low after Hamas indicated it would only accept a previous framework deal on the table months ago. And tonight, Iran rejecting the notion it shouldn't retaliate for the assassination of a top Hamas leader in Tehran, calling a plea from the UK, France and Germany excessive. If talks were to break down, the White House saying they're ready to defend Israel. The Pentagon deploying two aircraft carrier strike groups and a missile-guided submarine into the Middle East. The bottom line is, you know, I'm not going to speculate or, or try to guess when they might attack, um, other than to say we need to take it seriously, uh, and we are doing that. And so we will be prepared uh, and are prepared. And, David, the State Department tonight approving the sale of $20 billion worth of weaponry to Israel, including advanced medium-range air-to-air missiles, which could be used to thwart a potential aerial assault. David? Tom Sufi Burridge in Tel Aviv for us again tonight. Thank you, Tom. Now to the war in Ukraine and tonight, President Zelensky now saying Ukrainian forces are now uh, moving deeper into Russia. And tonight, right here, you'll see the images of some Russian soldiers now surrendering. Here's our chief foreign correspondent, Ian Panel now. Tonight, Ukraine pushing deeper into Russia, taking prisoners on the way, here bound and blindfolded. Some Russian soldiers seen surrendering by the roadside as Ukraine sends more troops across the border. The Kremlin caught totally off guard by the audacious operation, but now saying it stopped a further advance. The Ukrainian offensive does appear to have slowed, but not stopped. Tonight, President Zelensky saying, despite the difficult and intense battles, our forces continue to advance and our state's exchange fund is growing, referring to plans to capture Russian land and trade it for Ukrainian territory. Zelensky claiming more than 70 settlements now under their control, but some of these likely very small. And tonight, President Biden weighing in for the first time on the Ukrainian assault. I have spoken with my staff on a regular basis, probably every four or five hours for the last six or eight days, and uh, it's, uh, it's creating a real dilemma for Putin. David, Russia appearing to pull a small number of its troops back from Ukraine to defend the homeland. However, although it is facing a major challenge, Russia does remain strong and is still advancing on the front lines in eastern Ukraine. David? Ian, panel on this again tonight. Ian, thank you. We're going to turn now to the horrific images coming in from Greece tonight. Out-of-control wildfires forcing new evacuations just outside Athens. And American tourists there to see ancient ruins are now witnessing a country in flames. Here's our foreign correspondent, Britt Klinet, from Greece tonight. Tonight, one person is dead and tens of thousands have been forced to flee. Greece's largest wildfire this year raging over the last 48 hours, just miles from the center of Athens. The fire's breaking out Sunday. Fierce winds quickly fanning the flames up to 80 feet high. Firefighters now working to put out the flames in this building in this Athens suburb. You can feel the fire, the heat radiating from this building. It stings the eyes and there's smoke that's blanketed the area. Harrowing video showing police carrying the elderly to safety. Several hospitals had to be evacuated. You can see the impact of these fires in this residential area, scorching homes, destroying buildings in one of the hottest, driest summers on record. Authorities finding the body of a woman inside a building who they believe was trapped by the fire. Smoke looming over those famed archaeological sites that draw in so many tourists each year, like this group from Boulder, Colorado. We found out about the fires when we landed. It was definitely scary landing here and that being like the first thing that we saw. Yeah. David, Greece tonight remains on high alert as the winds could pick up at any time, igniting new fires. David? Britt Klenet, live in Athens tonight. Britt, thank you. Meantime, back here in the U.S. tonight, President Biden with First Lady Dr. Jill Biden announcing major grants for his cancer moonshot, his very personal mission to cut cancer deaths in the U.S. in half within 25 years. Here's our senior White House correspondent, Selena Wang. Tonight, President Biden awarding $150 million in research funds as part of his cancer moonshot, an initiative that's deeply personal and one he hopes will be a lasting part of his legacy. Folks, it's fair to say one of the most devastating words anyone can hear, and it's not hyperbole. Is cancer. Biden lost his beloved son Bo to brain cancer in 2015. 
launching its cancer moonshot as vice president, then relaunching it in 2022 as president. His goal, cutting cancer death rates by half in 25 years, which would prevent more than 4 million deaths from cancer in this country by 2047. So what they do is the president traveling to New Orleans with the first lady today, announcing funding for eight research groups across the country, all working to help surgeons more precisely remove tumors from those with cancer. We know all families touched by cancers are in a race against time. It's all part of our goal of our cancer moonshot to end cancer as we know it. In the final months of his presidency, Biden is prioritizing issues that are near and dear to his heart. That also includes lowering costs for Americans. That will be the focus of his event with Vice President Harris later this week, their first event together since Biden dropped out of this race. David. Selena Wang at the White House tonight. Selena, thank you. When we come back here, the largest nuclear power plant in the U.S. issuing an alert after a fire breaks out. Also, the new study tonight when it comes to adults and alcohol, even those who drink moderately and what it reveals. And then the incredible discovery here in the U.S., the first look tonight at what they believe is a new dinosaur species put back together. And you'll see it here. Tonight, the largest nuclear power plant in the country issuing a safety alert for a time outside Augusta, Georgia. Officials at Plant Vogel declaring the alert after an equipment fire broke out at the site. Authorities say the fire was put out. There was no danger now to the public. The alert now officially lifted tonight. Meantime, in the UK, police are on heightened alert as Taylor Swift now prepares to resume her European concert tour in London after that foiled terror plot. She's scheduled to perform at Wembley Stadium on Thursday for the first time since that plot in Vienna. Huge crowds are expected. Police say that thousands of fans typically expected to show up without tickets will not be allowed outside the stadium. When we come back here tonight, the new study about adults and the risks of drinking alcohol, even moderate drinking, what they have found. And the first look tonight at what's believed to be a new species of dinosaur discovered right here in the U.S. in a moment. To the index of other news tonight, the new study on drinking warning even small amounts of alcohol can be bad for your health. Researchers say data shows that light to moderate drinking can have negative effects, especially among middle aged and older adults. The study finding that moderate drinkers have a 33% higher risk of death. The study published in JAMA Network. Tonight, a rare sight in the skies. Overnight, astronomers say Mars and Jupiter will appear so close to each other that they'll look like a double planet. The two planets separated by 350 million miles, but it won't look like it. They'll appear to be just a third of a degree apart. Best time, they say, about 1 a.m. Eastern. Check it out. When we come back here tonight, another stunning sight. The first look tonight at what could be a new species of dinosaur found right here in the U.S. ABC World News Tonight with David Muir, sponsored by Vivgard Hytrulo and Vivgard. Finally tonight here, 150 million years later, the first look at what they believe is a new species of dinosaur uncovered right here in the U.S. Tonight, the incredible discovery and the effort that's followed. Believed to be a brand new species of dinosaur found in the U.S., 75 feet long, thought to belong to a species of long neck herbivore dinosaurs called sauropods, discovered in a remote part of Utah in 2007. Over the past nine years, a team of scientists, students, volunteers, all helping to painstakingly dig it out of the rock, protect it in plaster, and then ship it to a reconstruction team. Paleontologists say the fossils are about 150 million years old from the late Jurassic period. For years now, the massive undertaking in the warehouse, putting the fossil together, a composite of the newly found dinosaurs. Nat Geo, part of our parent company Disney, has been documenting the reconstruction and is first to unveil it now to the world. The team adjusting the skull, the blacksmith and sparks, bringing the dinosaur back to form. Now it's new home at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. And look closely there, from its tail to its feet, the fossils are green. It is the only green dinosaur on display in the world, getting its color from the minerals in the riverbed where the fossils were found, right here tonight. Good evening, David. Dr. Nate Smith, director of the Dinosaur Institute there, grateful to this team. Over many years, dozens of people have worked to bring this amazing skeleton to the public. The exhibit will open in Los Angeles in November. In the meantime, you can find Nat Geo's exclusive on the reconstructed dinosaur at natgeo.com and in their September issue. And by the way, the dinosaur's nickname is Natalie. And just listen to how she got her name. Natalie got its nickname from the gnats that would relentlessly pester our excavators when they were working in Southeast Utah. Thank you and have a great night. An extraordinary effort. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.